Welcome to Craving More, a CrossFit Crave podcast where we find motivation through obstacles, resistance, and everyday life with your co-host, Matt and CJ. On today's podcast, we become the guest on PRing Your Life with Dr. Libby Wilson and health coach Alex Payton. Please enjoy today's podcast as we review grit. We talk about things that we've struggled with in our lives and how we were able to overcome them. Sorry about the video, guys. There's none available today. Please enjoy the great listen. Welcome to the PR in Your Life podcast, episode number 13. This podcast is designed to help age 40 and over athletes live their best life. On this episode, we're going to talk to two friends and fellow podcasters about grit and the hardest things we've ever done and what we've learned from those experiences. We'll keep it real and share the highs and the lows, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We've got a lot to share, so let's quit wasting time and go. Hi, I'm Dr. Libby. And I'm Coach Alex. Welcome to PR in Life Podcast, where it's all about thriving, not just surviving as an over 40 athlete. I've been a family practitioner for almost 20 years, and I have been dissatisfied with what medicine has to offer athletes. Now, as a functional medicine doctor, I've teamed up with Alex, a functional health coach, to talk about how to get to the root cause of symptoms. And together, we'll teach you how to make 40 and beyond the best years of your life. Hey guys! Hello. Hello. Yeah, thanks for coming all the way to Springfield to podcast yeah. with us. Yeah. How fun is this? It's amazing. It was a good drive. Yeah, it wasn't oh, too yeah. bad. No, easy. Oh, no, easy. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you well, guys could just chat the whole yeah. time, and then that always makes it go super yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. Like when we came to Salina that one time, it's just yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, by myself, it's kind of a long drive because I've done yep. that drive so right. many times. Yep. But it's girls. Chit chat the yeah, whole time. Yeah, we were yeah. just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Talking, we were, talking. Yeah, us girls you. chit chatted the whole time. Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> See, what do boys do? That's what right. Do we chit chatted the whole time. <laughs> we went through our. We're. Uh, we've got a competition coming up in two weeks, so we. Yeah, oh. we went through planning for that. The events and made sure everything. <gasps> wow. Was right. What is yeah. it? Oh, a competition oh, at your right. box. That's yeah, right. I did yeah. see it. Yeah. Awesome. It's our first ever summer classic. So. Oh, yeah. We're stoked. We've got twenty-two teams. That's right. It's the 25th, isn't it? 25th. Mm -hmm. 22 okay. teams, 12 RX teams. And wow. Yeah, so we are stoked. It's, so tell uh, us, what are the movements? <laughs> yes. Well, here's those, workout those, one. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, uh, well, actually, they'll already be released by the time this gets released. But uh, yeah, we are... We're starting to release those tomorrow. Okay. So it's... Uh, I would say it's all-encompassing CrossFit. But right okay. out of the gate, we're going to test time and endurance okay. right out of the gate with yeah. a nice long run. Okay. Followed by... A heavy deadlift. Wow. Okay. So speed and endurance followed by how strong you are. I love Fun. it. Classic CrossFit. I love, <laughs> love it. it. That is great. Yeah. That's one event of four and then the finals. So Awesome. Now you guys have hosted um, competitions before, but never this. Comp yeah. Never not, this. Not series. outside of our own, you know, kind of box family. Okay. So we've done, you know, internal stuff where mm. we've got it. You know, yeah. like you team up with somebody from the box and you do throwdowns and all sure. that kind of stuff. But never outside of inviting other gyms yeah, exactly. in and other right. people yep. oh that'll be fun yeah I, so i am sure good. you guys filled up fast with all yeah. the competitions being canceled i know where people yep. are excited yeah. to get out and do mm -hmm. something yeah. And yeah 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 the cool part about it is we've got the all our college students that are back in that are coaches now that are working for us they took it on so we've got sports grads and business grads that yeah. are like oh let us do that so for me Sure. I just sat back. <laughs> right. Go. Here you go. Even better. And right? knocked it out of the park. Him and it kind of it kind of worked perfect because we had like the exercise science people, so we were like, and we we're coaches, so we were trying to make the workouts. And then, yep. Ian, yep, he's like the business guy, so he went around to different places and like talked to them about sponsorships. I don't even know what because I don't know what's going yeah. on there. I mean, yeah. literally put it a shirt well. and tie on, yeah, and promoted it for sponsors. We have banner sponsors, shirt sponsor. Yeah, it was. Oh my gosh. It was, for he us, did, he did from, well. <laughs> the manager, the owner's perspective, it was like, "Yep, hands off." <laughs> There's yeah. nothing like the community support yeah. in the in Mercer County, yeah. where you guys are from. Mm -hmm. Like, it is oh, yeah. just, yep. Um, we just love it there. It's yep. just a, it's a neat. If, yeah. if you've never really been there much, you just can't, yeah. you can't appreciate it. I don't think that's right. Um, it's just so, different. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I love Springfield too, but it's just a different, bigger mm-hmm. vibe. Different vibe. vibe yep. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first time I was there, I did a bike race. Yeah, we, we did, did the that. Cola Vita time trial around the lake. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I remember when that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was super yeah. duper cool. Yeah, it was fun. So let He's, me go ahead. Okay. That was our chit chat. There's yeah. our chit chat. <laughs> That's, That's what we talked about. Well, about. I just yeah. wanted to say <laughs> it took us an hour and a half to do that though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, That's right. I just wanted to say who you guys are. We've got um, Matt Schindeldecker yeah. and CJ. How do you say your last name? Cybert. Okay, I meant Cybert. to ask you that ahead of time. Like yeah. Siebert or Cybert, but um, Cybert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I run into that problem all the time. I'm sure you do. Well, there's do. both in Mercer County. There's Literally Sieberts and spelled there's Cyberts. My name, yeah. or spelled the way I spell my name. And it's pronounced Siebert. Mm-hmm. And okay. Me and then it's pronounced Siebert. All so right. that adds to the confusion. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know what? In all the years, um, I now, there's still so many like Mercer County names, mm-hmm. right? So like yeah. I, I remember the whole time I was working in Dayton and even in Springfield, like I'd run across someone once in mm-hmm. a while and I'd say, where are you from? Yeah. Just based on their last yeah. name, because there are just lots of classic last sure. names that are from Schwedens, that area. Hoynes, Hoynes. Yes. It, it, Exactly. They're all over. They're all yeah, over. And if right. you see the name, it's like, usually I can, I'll be like, where are you from? And, and they'll say, oh, little town up northwest Ohio. Yeah. I'm like, oh, really? Which yeah, one? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So these guys came from Salina. Mm-hmm. And um, they um, Matt's the owner of CrossFit Crave. Mm-hmm. And um, they have a podcast, and we have a podcast, and yeah. we thought, let's get together let's and do it. And yeah. do it. So um, thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for coming. I'm excited I was, to be here. Yeah. 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 I, I was trying to think when I first met you, Matt. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember our past crossing in Mercer County. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, we sh- nope. they should have because like we're the exact same age. Yep. I think we went to school, graduated the exact same year. Yep. Yeah. You went so to Rockford. I went to Rockford. And I went to Salina. Salina. Mm-hmm. And you... Obviously knew my wife. Yes, I in went high to, school. Yes, right because you guys graduated together. Same year. Yep. 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 Exactly. And um, but I don't remember meeting you when I lived in Mercer nope. County. But I think the first time I remember meeting you would have been you came to Long Road CrossFit yep. Urbana. That's exactly yep. when we met. And you did a gymnastic seminar. Yep. That I took. Yep. Which was exactly awesome. Yep. And yes, Jen, it was. Jen said that the minute we walked in, she's like, "Oh, there's Libby." Libby. Yeah. Like, she. Who's that? Who's Libby? Yeah, right? yeah, who's Libby? Well, I graduated with her. <laughs> and your wife what? looks exactly <laughs> yeah, she's not changed. the same. I mean, she yeah. has not changed nope. one bit. I nope. mean, she looks exactly, <laughs> right. exactly wow. the same as she yep. did in high school. Yeah. So, yeah, you came down and did that gymnastics seminar, which was super awesome. And had we had we gone to our gymnastics thing yet at that point? I can't remember. Yes, mm-hmm. we had. Mm-hmm. Because that's when I was it just really reaffirmed. Mm-hmm. Hearing you say everything, like mm-hmm. yeah, and you said yeah. the same things they said. Certain movements, oh, yeah. which we never would have introduced, yes. never would have brought about. Yeah, and I was like, "Yep, there you go." Yeah, yeah. but you yeah. did such a good job of oh. like oh, leading the you. group. I mean, it was it, <laughs> it was, was it really was great. Yeah. yeah really well yeah. done. Thank you. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I think I don't think I'd ever been into CrossFit Crave yet, but I my, I'd eyeballed it every mm-hmm. time we go to Salina, mm-hmm. and then sure. after meeting you, we'd came in a couple of times and That's did right. some classes yeah. and stuff. And then the first time I met you, CJ, was the podcast. podcast I think the day, yeah, yeah, the mm-hmm. day of the. I, I came you were up. doing a workout right before. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. And I would, I came up and said something to you. I don't know. And then I walked back to Matt and I was like, "Who's that?" Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "We have a podcast with her today." And I'm like, "Oh, jeez." Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's the new girl over yeah, there? Yeah. yeah, I'm like, wow, yeah. she's killing it. <laughs> and you literally, I think you literally said, I'm dying. <laughs> so she's yeah. killing it or it's killing her, but good, right. she's doing well. That's a little right. bit of both, probably. <laughs> That's right. yeah. So awesome. And it, is that the first time you met um, Matt? Was that that gymnastics no, seminar? No, I'm trying to remember. I think yeah. it was before at some point. I think point. it was at practice. Yeah. We had crossed paths at a some point times. in time. And of course, yep. I knew Jamie. Yep. So okay. Sure. Yep. Had that connection as well. So, exactly. Yeah. And then we gone up to you a couple of times um, for some different gymnastics yeah. stuff. Yeah. But I think that was I don't know if that was before or after the seminar. So yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was probably after. I think that was the catalyst that started. Okay. You know, there were several ladies that would come up on a Saturday or Sunday, yeah. and between yeah. Tyler and I mm-hmm. would work yes. with you guys. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. We did that a couple of times too, yeah. and yeah. Um, he's a great. Yeah. Too. Yeah. He's awesome. He's he's very fluid and yes. can speak yeah. well. And yeah, he's yeah. really good. Yeah. He did for it. sure. You've got a good little group up there. You yeah, really. We're fortunate. Yeah. 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 I saw. J- so I've known Jamie for mm-hmm. a long time. So I went to prom with her brother. Brother. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. 
That's right. I know because I brought Libby to a hero wad. It was a holiday, and all of a sudden, her and Jamie connected. Yes. And I was like, "How in the world do you two know each other?" That's yep. right. She dated my brother. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I know. Yeah. Super small world, and yeah. she looks exactly the same as she yeah. did back. Like yeah. I knew yeah. her when she That's was like right. in junior high. I think yeah. you know. So crazy small world. <laughs> yeah. So cool. But yeah. So good. Good stuff. Um, yes. So we're going to talk about grit today, and I mm. think. You know, um, I, I just love a challenge, you yeah. know, and I and I love what you learn about yourself mm-hmm. in, in a challenge. And I'm always looking for new challenges to just kind of grow um, just as a person, mm-hmm. both mentally and yeah. physically and all of that stuff. And I, I had the realization as I was thinking about this podcast, and I was telling my husband this just yesterday. I said, I've always loved to create challenges, but I've always been a little – careful to make sure it's something I think I can actually do Mm -hmm. because I don't want to fail at it. Yeah. But I'm getting to the spot in my life where I'm ready to kind of even reach a little further, you know, Um, and just, you know, pick a goal that I think maybe I won't be able to make and Mm kind of see what you can become as a person in that, Mm -hmm. in that regard too. But, um, but even with that being said, I I've, I've made some pretty big goals for myself and, and, conquered a lot of those things and in each one there's just so much personal growth that goes along with it and mm-hmm. i know that we all have done some things i mean i know cj i, I i'm i don't know if you're going to talk about this or not but I, I remember hearing about a really difficult endurance thing you go rock that's yes. what i have oh my gosh I, okay i'm dying to hear all about that like i think that's a super cool thing i know alex has done so many things and i i know i remember you talking about something once mm-hmm. about like, didn't you do the Murph like every oh, week for a year? Mm-hmm. For a year, mm-hmm. I mean, yep. that is that was am- a challenge. Yeah, that. I wasn't going to talk about that, but that yeah, was a fun but that's challenge. Still a super yeah. cool. Ch- I mean, the Murph like that kicks yeah. your butt. You know, oh, I mean, yeah. that takes me days, mm-hmm. days to recover from yeah. something like that. Yep. Um, you know, and just the the mental. You know, there's so many reasons your brain will come up with, like as mm-hmm. to why you should quit and stop doing that yeah anytime you know but then to just have the mental mm-hmm. um strength to just like be like no i'm going to keep yeah. pushing through and do this That's and right. um so I, I thought it would be interesting to come together and the four of us and just kind of talk about an experience and and the whole process mm-hmm. of that so mm-hmm. we'll let you go first wait, what yeah, are you wait gonna can talk i about? can yeah. i butt in here real yes. quick you said you don't want to do anything that you would think you'll fail mm-hmm. didn't you do an iron man I did. And she's like, oh, I'm not going to fail. She's an Iron Man. <laughs> That's yeah. ab- absolutely absurd. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. am I, how do we talk about what we're going to talk about I now know. if an Iron Man is easy? <laughs> it wasn't easy, but I was pretty sure that like, you could get through it. That if I put the work in, and like mm-hmm. I, I was, I've been always one to like, like over prepare for sure. something so that yeah. I can then make sure it can yep. happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but, yeah. So yeah, that's I just had to give you crap for that. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You, that's that's oh, it was easy. Nice. <laughs> it was easy. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's no right. problem. I wish they'd make a hard challenge in this world. <laughs> right. Exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Two Iron Man's back to back. Yeah. yeah. People do that. That's, yeah, they oh, do. Just Are you when serious? you do something that you think is like so yeah. amazing, like yeah. there are people doing all doing kinds something of stuff. There's else. that oh, yeah. Iron Man cowboy that did like one every day for a month to raise money. Yeah. I mean, so it's like, yeah. Wow. Right. Okay. Why? Just I know. That's right. <laughs> What's your why? That's nuts. His yeah. why is Just, different than ours. Honestly. <laughs> exactly. What's your why? Yeah. I could have the same why and I'd, I'd eat it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's that right. is crazy. I mean, yeah. So there's people doing all kinds of crazy mm-hmm. stuff out mm-hmm. there. That is for sure. But, but um, honestly, though, it's so inspiring. Yeah. It is. It is. And you know what? I think our mind is the first thing to go. Like, I mean, yeah. your mm-hmm. body will do so mm-hmm. much more than your mind will ever want to allow you to yeah. do um because oh my gosh i can I, I can think about my iron man i almost quit on my iron man at one point and it was like i was just checking along fine and all of a sudden i was like this is dumb i want to stop and like mm-hmm. <laughs> pretty much tried to convince myself to stop yeah. really quickly <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> because and then you'll justify it all i mean yeah. you're just like well we have so many safeguards put up like yeah i don't know like I feel like it's like, that's like an evolutionary thing too to like save your life, right? Even if you're not in, yeah, you're not even in danger. You're doing it because you want to. Fight. Yeah, the mm-hmm. person right just yeah. kicks in and yeah, yeah. your brain is I, like go back in the cave and hide. You know, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I think it changes though when you when you do something as an individual. You're you're with a group 
in mm-hmm. the Iron Man. But mm-hmm. you, when you're doing it as an individual, that's different than doing something together with a group of people, mm-hmm. you know, similar to a CrossFit event. Right. You know, and that's what I was going to, you know, the two things I was going to throw out there were sports related. But yeah, yeah. no, go ahead. Yeah, so, yeah tell us. So the, the Iron Man or the, the Murph once a week, every week. You know, every- that was, that was, it was fun because it was all mental. It was all to me. I didn't, normally I didn't have any music on because mm-hmm. you're running outside. So I didn't care to put music in or listen to anything. Yeah. But it was, I think the quickest time I was like 32 oh. some odd minutes was the quickest I was able to get through it. Okay. Now tell now, everybody what the Murph is because not everybody might know. Yeah, okay. So it's a, a mile run, uh, 100 pull ups, 200 push ups, 300 air squats, followed by a mile run, mm-hmm. vested with a 20 pound vest on. 20 pound yep. weighted vest. So. so the fast, it went, and that was, partition so i'd always run the mile up front and then run the mile on the end and then i would work through different partitions you know 510 or 5 5 15 5 or 5 10 whatever it was right to get through it got it um so the quickest i was able was like 32 minutes but every week i so look forward to that time whether it took me an hour Mm -hmm. or 32 minutes because Mm -hmm. it was in it was all inside it was all mental Mm -hmm. right and i would just get lost in the the movement and my mind would just wonder um but Surprisingly enough, that wasn't the most ty- tiresome or, or physically demanding workout that I've done. Okay. Um, and it, there's really two that stick out in my mind. Every year for Veterans Day, we do a 24-hour um, workout uh, for an organization out of Mercer County called Lots for Soldiers. And they donate homes to either um, retired um, discharged military veterans or active met- veterans. So they okay. raise money, they build a home, and then they turn it over um, to little to no cost to the individuals. So every year, we'll be in our fourth year this year, we do a hero watt an hour, every hour for 24 hours. So you can sign up for one or five or all 24 or whatever you want to do. And most of us have done you know, all 24 hours worth of workouts. So but 24 hours straight, you're 24 doing 24 hours straight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Start at the top of the hour. Yep. Now, it's modified okay. because nobody can take that physical demand and sure. beating off of the hero workouts. There's yeah. close to 70 hero workouts. Right. We take 24 out of those 70 and we partition. We, so we work out each hour on the hour. Yeah. We do a hero workout. And then, you know, we, we a lot of times there's several heroes locally that are a part of the CrossFit hero workouts. So we invite their family and um, so we video it and, you know, we dedicate that hour oh, to my. them. And so it's a cool fundraising event. But even that, you're, you're still, you're moving for 24 hours, but you're with four or five or 10 or 20 mm-hmm. other people. Who are so, kind to help build you up yeah, and like. Yeah, and they're the, working out and. It's the combined suffering. Exactly. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah. So that for me, you know, at 45, that takes me about uh, four to days to recover mm-hmm. like the next day i feel pretty good the second day after that i feel yeah. trashed <laughs> yes that's always me yeah. too yep um so that's one that was every year and i thought well maybe i'll talk about that but there is one that that sticks out in my mind worse than any and it was two years ago on 9 11 we always do the a 9 11 tribute yeah and we have a lot of firefighters we have a, a fire chief that's a part of our um our box you know so every year he comes along and he wears his full run gear and he allows us to, so he brings extras and allows allows us mm-hmm. coaches to wear them. Okay. So he and I did the first workout together, which is typically I, I even forget all the movements, but it's a longer workout in full fire gear, full okay. suit, right? So after it was done, I said, okay, I'm going to challenge myself to do the 364 burpees for the firefighters that fell, oh. and I had the fire suit on, right? So I'm like, I'm going to do this. And it was by myself, no music. I was in the back of the, you know, there was other classes going on. And that crushed me. Uh-huh. Took 50 some minutes, 57 minutes, I think it was. Oh my right? gosh. But that was, I've never had rhabdo, ever. Mm-hmm. But I was literally sick for two days after that. Okay. Like the second I finished, I started stripping things off. I was dehydrated. You know, it, I, my head just was oh, throbbing, yeah. you know, yeah. that whole process. And within an hour, I started to get sick to my stomach. Uh-huh. And then I'm like, holy smokes, like uh-huh. this is for two days. Oh, you know, gosh. so I don't know if I had rhabdo, but there was something that was physically wrecked. Wrong. Something yeah. very wrong. Something yep. was wrong. <laughs> yep. that, that I was like, that at took what, it out of me. At what point did you start to think something might be wrong? Like 100 burpees in. 100 burpees in. You're like, this is not I'm, going well. I'm looking at the clock and I, I couldn't, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm stepping down and stepping up and I'm getting a little jump and I'm like, yeah. this is just, 
Now, again, you're wearing a, a suit that's, yeah. you know, How much it's, do they weigh? Oh, they're probably 35 or 40 okay. pounds. Wow. Okay. Boots, yeah. pants, jacket. Yeah. You know, so you're, I didn't have yeah. a helmet on, yeah. but boots, jack, you know, and it's meant to keep temperature out. Mm -hmm. So all your body temperatures trapped. Oh my gosh. It's right there. And so I if was you're just, a wrestler, that would be the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah. To yeah, drop some serious Did you body weigh yourself weight. before and after? I didn't. Yeah. I should have. <laughs> I'd wow. be curious. I should have, but I, I didn't. But that was the most physically demanding and thing. And when did you decide you were going to do all those burpees? Like so that, that ahead of time? That or day. That yeah, day? Yeah. It was like, because after the first workout, I'm like, I feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, this was fun, and Let's I'm good. And go do 364. Yeah, and some of our firefighters always do that. So they always do whatever we do, and then they do the 300, I think it's 344 or whatever it is, okay. burpees. But they, you know, they, they don't put their suits on or anything. They right. just, like Dane and Kane and that group, mm -hmm. they just go out and, and hammer Crush out it. some I'm burpees, like, yeah. Man, I'm going to go out and hammer it. Yeah. And I've got this fire suit. I might as well wear so it. Might as well do it, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> So you felt pretty, pretty bad for a couple of days after that. Yeah, two days. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I never got nauseous to the point where I was, where I was actually nauseous, but mm -hmm. that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. And my body ached. Mm -hmm. I'm sure two I, days. I would love to know what your CPK level yeah, was. So that's how I'm we sure checked. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's like anytime I'd sometimes have people come in and I check their CPK, which is the mm -hmm. blood test that you do for right. rhabdo. And Normal is like zero to 250, but sometimes people would be like a thousand and I'd be like, have you exercised like in the last mm -hmm. 24 hours? And if they said yes, I'd be like, it's probably just that. It's no big deal. Like that's yeah. not an alarming number. Right. I'm like, just let's have you recheck it in a couple of days, fasting and make sure it's normal and it would be fine. But like, I've seen it as high as like a hundred thousand, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, really, what? really high. Yeah. And I'm sure yours oh, yeah. was way up there. Now, do you remember like, were you having like was your urine output at all decreased? Oh yeah, yeah, yep, extremely. And then, yeah. it, and then that's it can, that's why I thought, well, this has got to be. Yeah, you know, I've never had rhabdo, yes. but this is this has got to be what it. And the treatment like. for rhabdo is you just like super hydrate, you know, yeah. and you just drink, 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 drink mm -hmm. fluids, and that will usually fix it. But um, but you can feel pretty pretty yeah, bad now. So would you do it again? I would. You would. Yeah, so you don't I regret just prepare. No, no. I would plan better. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't hydrate like, ahead of time. Yeah. And, yeah. I wouldn't just jump into that day. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do this. Right. Yeah, I and would you plan. work on it, build up to it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Get used to the suit. Get used to the mm -hmm. heat. Yep. Understand how to move. Yeah. Um, yeah. That you know, because towards the towards the tail end, I would say in the 200 range, it was like, just do one. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's literally where my mind mm -hmm. internally was. Every I couldn't hear anything else. It just everything else just sh sh went completely blank, and it was just just do one. Were people like kind of watching oh, yeah. you? In and yeah. out. Yeah, mm -hmm. people were coming back, and there uh -huh. was a few people that that you know when I got to that three hundred range or three twenty range, they're like, "Oh, come on, we'll do it with you." Mm -hmm. But even then, I I don't even remember the group of people that were surrounded. Surrounding. Yeah. I think one on Kenzie because she was right in my face. But I don't remember who else was around. Yeah. It was just like, I, got, I, I don't know if I think I can do one more. <laughs> did you think about quitting? No. Never did. Mm -mm. It was just like, how mm -mm. am I going to get through this? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I'm dying. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. I'm going to die yeah. or yep. I'm going to finish yep. this. <laughs> At 100, it, I, it settled into my mind that, okay, mm -hmm. this was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and damage and, and control. Honestly, and that's, and that's what I thought. This was a really bad idea. But I've committed to it. And I've started. And I, yeah. and I can't stop. Should have thought about that yep. before I said I was going to so, do it, right? <laughs> whether it takes me, you know, yeah. an hour or five, yep. I'm going to... I'm committed. I'm, I'm committed. Oh, my gosh. Yep. You're like my husband. I remember when he first did a triathlon, so I wasn't doing anything yet. And I went to watch... He didn't know how to swim, really, but he had mm -hmm. prepared. He would practiced. And I remember seeing him come out of the water at the sprint triathlon. And he, I was with his mom. We're mm -hmm. watching him. My oldest daughter, Josie, was a baby. And he comes out and he looks like he's about to... Yeah. I mean, he just looks yeah. Yeah. terrible. That's how I look, I'm sure. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I think the guy needs to stop. You know, but yeah. I'm like, I don't think he will. Like, I think he will, like, fall over and die before he would quit. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think the same way. Yeah. But, I mean, you did learn. From, I mean, first of all, mm -hmm. you know, you powered through it and mm -hmm. you were okay. Yep. So you developed mental toughness. Not that you didn't have it already, but it strengthened your mental toughness no question and you gain some wisdom about like okay mm -hmm. next mm -hmm. time i would do that yeah 
differently. That's right. Right? Uh, yeah, let's learn I'll from drink it. some Gatorades and Pedialytes the do day something. before. Yep. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. exactly. you just decided that day that you were going to do it. Just so that you, day. Yeah. So you really yep. couldn't I'm just prepare gonna for it. Have at it. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm sure I had water with me, but I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. sure it was there. I don't it know if I used it. It came out of you as soon as it went in. <laughs> That's right. You're sweating you know so much. If you're drinking after you're thirsty, it's right. too late. It's too late. <laughs> it yeah. is. Yeah, too late. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. Yeah that's, yeah, that's awesome. So you've done a lot of things, but that was – any yeah. any big challenges um, coming up for you? Um, not, not coming up necessarily. There's one of our members um, – Steve, I won't mention his last name, has, has written his first book. And so cool. he, he was like, hey, and he's got a, he's got a great, man, his, I can't wait to read it. Um, and he's like, have you ever thought about writing a book? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have anything to write a book about. And he's like, Matt, what well, time out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, you know, you're, you're, if you think about, you know, growing up and, you know, and just short snippets, you know, my mom went to prison. She died in prison. Mm-hmm. There's a whole story behind how that happened that that I lived through, and then just all of the the little roadblocks, you know, yeah. that that you go through in life. Yeah. And if you know, I when we when I read this, I'm like, well, I could talk for hours on yeah. outside of physically, mm-hmm. right? You know, because I played sports in high school, but I wasn't a great athlete. Yeah, you know, so physically, that was the toughest thing I've ever done. Yeah. But mentally, um, n- no. Yeah, <laughs> let's go back to when I was 12. Right, y- right. You know, so absolutely. So that. That might be something I tackle. Uh, um, I don't know the first thing yeah. about <laughs> writing a book. Yeah. Um, but Steve was like, you don't have to know. Just yeah. just start. I can help you. So I, I don't know. I thought about doing that at some point in time. I think so that's we'll awesome. See. And you know what? We for, I mean, first of all, coming from what you've come from, so many people would be like, I mean, you have so many built-in excuses to mm-hmm. like, you know. Yeah. To Pack be a in. loser mm-hmm. if you wanted to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I, yeah. Mean, I mean, that sounds really terrible to say yep. it that way but like there's a lot of mm-hmm. excuses that that would yeah. be like justifiable for sure, sure. yeah but instead to choose like you know what i'm not gonna yeah use them i'm gonna just change and yeah and yep. grow and Adapt and i think and we forget exactly. i think mm-hmm. like sometimes what we know we know so well that we forget that not everybody knows what you know. Like, yeah. you know, that the information and the insight that you mm-hmm. share is as valuable as it is. Sure. But absolutely, you've got yeah. a story to share. And yeah. it is, I mean, you could, I absolutely think you should yeah. write a book. And so I think we'll you see. could write a book. I agree. I really <laughs> do. It's on yeah. my list of things to do, too, is write yeah. a book. I mean, it's it's kind of on my radar, too. And nowadays... Like you can kind of self publish and everything mm-hmm. too, so it's not like you have to get picked up by right. Harper or whatever yeah. these things are. I mean, you can. There's ways to do it, yeah. and um, I don't know exactly how to do it, but yeah, I'm no sure either. I'm but sure I we can figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I bet I can. I bet that's we can right. figure it out. I bet you could too. So yeah. Yeah. that's awesome. So we'll see. So that might be the the next yeah. big yeah not physical challenge but yeah. mental challenge exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. let me ask you this: like what? What do you think mentally caused you to take the path that you've taken versus spiraling down in a negative path of mm. I think I there was a there was a point in time where I I did mm-hmm. a long point in time where I did go yeah. down the wrong path and you know age with age comes wisdom mm-hmm. um and so there was you, you know what happened to a night when I was 12 and leading into early teens and I carried that same call it chip and mm-hmm. reason to do everything that was not right yeah <laughs> yeah so to speak yeah um all the way through to I was about 25 and we're, we're we're going through times where I was probably as a high functioning alcoholic as one could be sure diving into the to the alcohol mm-hmm. in the afternoon or evenings after work constantly you know and then getting up at the cracking on and going to work and being high functioning at work and, okay you yep. know trying to raise two kids you know at, yep. at, there's a point in time where i was um, divorced for about a year and a half two years mm-hmm. raising two kids on my own and mm-hmm. that type of thing so it was there was a, a breaking point when i was about 26 um where Christ re-entered my life, and mm-hmm. I had a friend that came in and kind of led me yeah. to that direction. But it wasn't an overnight. It wasn't, you yeah. know, you heard a lot of stories like, I'm a born again Christian, it was light popped on. No, right. that, that's not the way it was. It yeah. was a constant barrage of little things that mm-hmm. led me to, you know, to a breaking point when I was 26, and then little things that led me to a, a more full life with Christ after that. Mm-hmm. And that's that's where it was like, okay, 
like I got to change. Yeah. There's something that I can rise up to. And I tell our probation kids always rise, right? Yeah. You got to make the conscious step to one, receive the help that's when it's given to you mm-hmm. and make the step out of the, the pit where you're at today. Mm-hmm. So just one step forward, just yes. always rise. Yes. You get beat down, just rise. Just take mm-hmm. one step in the right direction and dig out of that. Absolutely. Um, so it's it's been a, you know, it's it wasn't a, there's there's no overnight story. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> For me, at least. Yeah, um, but each it, day it was is a, a long choice, right? Yep, it, and, yep. and you know what? In, it's not that if you make a bad choice that the next day you have to keep making another bad choice. Mm-hmm. Like you can have a day where you like slip up a little bit and be like, all right, well, today's a new day. Right. I'm going to, yep. you know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You take a step backwards and you're yep. like, ah, oh, man. You know? Yeah. How do I dig out of yeah. this hole? Exactly. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Like, well, I, I got to not get in that hole again. Exactly. Because you know? you're like, did yeah. it work for me? Yeah. yeah. Did that work? Yeah. Yes or no? That's right. No, it didn't. That's and, right. And, yep. you know. Yeah. And it's every day. It's, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there. if you think about, you know, people that are drug drug addictive or alcohol addiction or, mm-hmm. you know, it, mental and physical abuse, yeah. every day is a challenge. We, we talked about this last week in our podcast and yeah. we talked about the little hi, the little voice that's in your head. Mm-hmm. Like if people could be in here, yeah. they would never want to go back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so on the out, outward experience, it's like, oh, hey, you know, Matt's a pretty, you know, easy mm-hmm. going guy yeah. and everything seems to be great and happy. Mm-hmm. But if you could listen to this, mm-hmm. you would be like, oh yeah. man, I am never going to go in that guy's head again. Yeah. Because it's a... And I think that's probably stuff that happened when I was young. That's a constant, like, okay, I can't think that way. I gotta go. I gotta do yeah. better. Or mm-hmm. I gotta be this person. And you know, so it's an every day when it, when alcoholic says or a, somebody that's that's addicted to drugs when they say this is an everyday mm-hmm. problem, it's an everyday thing. Yeah. Is it the alcohol, or is it more just like the negative self talk? It's the negative self talk. Yeah. And yeah. and I don't. And I, I say it was. I was never. I never went to AA. I mm-hmm. never really got licensed from. Yeah, you're an alcoholic, right. or you're. You've got ADHD. Right. You know, it, but it was, was a problem. It yeah. was a problem. Yeah. yeah, it was a problem in my life that mm-hmm. I recognized. That said, okay, I got to fix this. Mm-hmm. This is this won't last mm-hmm. long term. The the problem with me is right in here. The mm-hmm. addictiveness is right in my head. Mm-hmm. It's that wake up in the morning with a negative thought right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like okay. It's gonna be a long day. <laughs> yeah, you, you know yeah, what I mean. Exactly. Some days it's some days it's great. I'm like, hey, yeah. you know. And when I first came to you, mm-hmm. like I was, I would fall asleep at ten and wake up at two, mm-hmm. and this would turn on. Mm-hmm. My head would turn on, and yep. it would not shut off. Mm-hmm. And I would be at five o'clock in the morning, going, yeah, I've got the weight of the world, yep. and it's all gonna. At eight o'clock, it's going to be a disaster. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what my mind would constantly. Yeah, you know. So I I battle that. It's not as bad now because yeah. of what we've done together. Yeah. good. Um, I can sleep through the night and everything's that's good. But, awesome. I yeah. was listening to your podcast, um, yeah. and you were talking about with coronavirus that you're getting sleep, and I was like, oh, yes, oh, yeah, because I knew <laughs> yeah. you were like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. There's been yeah. some good things with coronavirus, and that's yeah. one thing. Yeah, but I yeah, think. The rest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you know I used to. St- think I had to earn my worthiness that like, mm-hmm. you know, and I would achieve mm-hmm. things to be worthy, you know, yep. and, and here's the thing, like, God loves you. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, he didn't make right. a mistake. Like you are perfectly worthy right. as is. Yeah. And it doesn't, it's not that if you do this or do that or do this other thing that mm-hmm. then you earn the worthiness. It's like, it's already given, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, yep. mm-hmm. but, but those old neural pathways are so deeply ingrained mm-hmm. that your mm-hmm. brain wants to go back to them every single day. Every like, day. Right. Yep. Every like, minute. Like, well, no, you're not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, everybody else is that's worthy, but is. not you. Not you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's everybody right. Everybody in the yep. world except Matt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And well, that's like, true. people do like your last night, like your last thought when you're going to bed at night is like, oh, I didn't get enough done today or oh, I didn't, mm-hmm. like I should have got more done today. And then your first thought when you wake up is always like, Oh, I need more sleep, or why can't I sleep, or like, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah, which is just like no. looking at the glass half negative always, mm-hmm. right? But yeah. our brains do that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they naturally yeah. do, and I'm, I fight it too, because I tend to be like, you know, there can be nine good things in a day and one bad thing, and then it's the one bad thing that I'm focused yeah. Yeah. on, you know, yeah, right. always. And it's just, I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm aware of it now, and so I think being aware of it is one of mm-hmm. the first steps to changing right. it, but it's so easy to go yeah. back there and, and i think doing these hard things like like we're talking about right now all our experiences that just helps so much more with all mm-hmm. like the negativity mm-hmm. or like oh, when you come so. in hardships with life mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Sure. right but i wanted to go back to what you said matt of talking about you know kind of like who would want to listen to my story mm-hmm. and i honestly believe 
100%. I look at my life and all the horrible chase choices that I've made and just different experiences that there was a lesson to be learned in mm -hmm. every single one of those. And it has surprised me that when I have talked about things to people of how helpful it was to them. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like a lot of times we're put yeah. here to tell our story. Yeah. 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 You never know yeah. whose yeah. story you're going yeah. to impact. Yeah, you're right. And that to, to that point, up until even maybe three or four years ago, um, even to the closest people in my life, it, like my wife, you know, mm -hmm. now she doesn't know e yeah. even some of those stories, or mm -hmm. hadn't, didn't yeah. know up until about four years ago when we started working with the probation kids. And so if an adult would approach and say, hey, you know, tell me about your life story. I'm like, oh, yeah, I went to Rockford and graduated mm -hmm. high school. Yeah. Went to college, got a good job. Mm -hmm. Here, you know, yeah. here I am. But yeah, the, and that's to the outside world. That's that's the story yeah. that, that I would tell. When those probation kids started coming in, and I could see me in the chip that they held on their yeah. shoulder mm -hmm. when they walked in. I can remember the the very first individual that I met through that whole program as a young lady, and she just had she had an attitude, and she was not going. She was hard to break through. Mm -hmm. She knew that coming in. You could just see her presence when mm -hmm. she walked in the door. She carried that chip right on yeah. her shoulder. Yeah. You know, so within about five minutes, I'm like, well, okay. So you're carrying it. And literally set her down. It was myself, the probation officer. Jen was there. Um, the individual that runs the probation department was there too. And I looked right at her. And I said, let me tell you something. You got it pretty bad, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dad's, in, Dad's in prison at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mom's in and off drugs. Yeah. Okay, good. Is your dad still alive? Yeah, good. My mom died in prison. Mm -hmm. You get to see her eyes. She kind of looked at me, what? I said, yeah. Yeah, I watched her do something extremely terrible mm -hmm. right in front of me when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And she paid for that for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. And so did I. Mm -hmm. But I've got a good job. I've got a great family. We, we run and operate two businesses. You can choose to sit on that couch and be that way for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And you can follow in your parents' footsteps. Or you can choose to stop. Mm -hmm changed from that day forward mm -hmm. you know she was like now she wouldn't talk to anyone else yeah. until she came in hey matt right. <laughs> so yeah. you could see that shoulder go oh okay maybe well, she's like this like dude your gets point. it yeah yeah, yeah. your and story yeah. is life-changing to someone else we right think yeah. people want to be impressed by all of the like cool things we do yeah. but what makes you relatable and what makes people like i think like if you're perfect, people think you're perfect, then they think, well, there's something kind of wrong with me. Yeah. I'm not perfect like yeah. him, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then yeah. when you just share it, they're like, oh, this guy is a real dude, just like yeah. I'm a real person. Right. And mm -hmm. he's got struggles too. It's so much more yeah. powerful, yeah. Uh, you know, than, than putting ourselves on this imaginary pedestal that doesn't right. exist, you know, yeah. and um, making the world think that we're so great when yeah. we're yeah. all just broken people yeah. trying to That's do right. the best that That's we can, right. right? Nobody's perfect. And no. like social media too, like oh, everyone gosh. only posts their good stuff. Right? We all get that. Everyone gets that. Yeah. Um, so that's like, there's not a lot of truth in that, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even like what Matt was saying, if an adult asks him like, hey, like what's your story? Whatever. Like, oh, I graduated from Parkway. I went to college, got right. a good job. Yeah. You only, you don't tell people like, Oh, yeah. I'm broken. Right. Like, that's yeah. right. Now, you can't what say, the conversation well, is that? Yeah. Let me tell you how yeah. I got there. Yeah, that's right. that's <laughs> yeah. Sit down, son. Yeah. Let me teach you something. Yeah. That's exactly. Right. That's right. Exactly. Yep. So yeah. thanks for sharing that, yeah. Matt. That is, I, I think that's what I like about on our podcast is like just trying to be real. Like, you know, mm -hmm. we're not perfect people. Right. We've got it all figured out. I mean, mm -hmm. we've figured some things out. And I, I yeah. that's one thing I've loved about getting older. It's like mm -hmm. I'm just figuring things out more yeah. and more as time goes on. And I, I'll probably look back 20 years from now thinking I wasn't idiot now because yeah, right you know now. i'll know more Still then have, but yeah. um yeah. but it's you know that's what life's about i think is every step of the way yeah. learning and growing and Agree. trying to become a better human every step of the way every day. and yep. yeah absolutely i think it's really good to look back on yourself and be like oh i was an idiot you know because mm -hmm. then I you're like daily yeah well yeah, yeah same <laughs> i guess but, <laughs> yeah. 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 but then right. you know you're getting better and smarter and like improving you know yeah you don't yeah. want to look back and be like oh i had better perspective back then yeah right yeah, yeah. and yeah. i think looking at back at yourself though with some compassion though as well being like mm -hmm. yeah i didn't know mm -hmm. any better i just knew what i knew yeah. you know instead of beating right. yourself up being like gosh yeah. you know because yeah you just yeah you know. being able to be humble enough to admit it mm -hmm. and move on and tell right. people, you know, yeah. I mean, it's right. Like that person got to where I am now. How cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. CJ. Yeah. What about you? You're up, All mister. Right. 
Well, so the hardest thing. How old thing, are you, first of all? 23. Okay, so 23. I mean, this, I mean, okay. that's like, I was, I yeah. don't know. I mean, I guess I'd done a little bit of hard stuff at 23, but I don't know. I was, I was, I didn't have a lot of things figured out yet. So I'm yeah. impressed I with don't that. Have you're, figured out. you've got a lot figured <laughs> out. <laughs> no, yeah. so I'm, you're way further than I was. I know. Oh I know. I, know. I, I struggle with that so hard. Like, I'm, <gasps> I don't know, finding your purpose or whatever. Yeah. I don't really think you can do that, but I'm just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And now I'm sitting at a table with like a doctor and like successful people. I'm like, oh gosh. I'm <laughs> what the heck can I purpose. say? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> don't belittle what you have to share, mister, because I know <laughs> you've got some stuff. Well, so, so the hardest thing I think I've ever done is college. Okay. To, like to start. Like, yeah. I struggled. I struggle a lot in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Just like I don't learn that way. And then I don't, like, I have massive test anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got a total of $500 in scholarships from my high school for this, like, big brother program. Yeah. And then I went to this, like, D1 school that was, like, $20,000. And I'm like, the five hundred's not going very thought far. thought it was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it bought food for a month. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, so then, I don't know. I paid for everything myself. So, like, and I was paying off the interest on my loans yeah. and working three jobs like part-time jobs, but like there was one time my junior year, I had to go on a run around campus to find $5 to pay for rent. Oh my gosh. Like, because I was too embarrassed like to ask anyone for money. Mm-hmm. So that was like, and I just struggled in school. So like trying to get my GPA up and everyone else seemed so smart. Yeah. So that was probably the hardest thing I did. Where'd you go to school? But Ohio University. Okay. Yeah. Then you went there for four years? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So I think that if anyone can graduate, like if you pay for everything, you're going to yeah. you're gonna grow from that. Like I got I, – I was really bad in the classroom, but what I got from that I found out later was just like the ability to learn. Yeah. Like I love – I would have never – if you asked me to read a book in college, I'd be like, get out of here. You're crazy. Mm-hmm. I read my physics textbook specifically to make me fall asleep. Yeah. Like <laughs> – Yeah. Like so then now it's like I'm always reading a book. Like I have a half hour every night so I can read. Like Yes. So I got that from it for sure. So it was good. But the hardest thing physically was what you were talking about earlier, the go yes. ruck. Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah. So it was at <clears throat> Fort Bragg in North Carolina. Um, and it was just fairly recent, right? Like it was. February. Okay. Wow. February yeah. of 2019. 2020. 2020. 2020. Yeah. 2020. Did you keep your boots? Yeah. Yeah. I still got those boots. <laughs> like I'm having forever. I had to take them to the car wash though and power wash everything down. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was terrible. And I massively screwed up before this. Like, I didn't train for it enough. Yeah. I, the farthest I went before we started was 10 miles. So I went on, like, three rucks with just some dudes. Like, I didn't I didn't know how fast I was supposed to go or how to pace anything. I'm like, you just put a backpack on and walk. Yeah. You know, what's, mm-hmm. what's, how can that be How hard, hard can that so be? So tell right? us what yeah. was the go ruck. It was – so – good good idea. Yeah. A 24-hour event. Okay. It's, so wow. on the website, it says 24-plus hours, 40-plus miles. Okay. With a 30-pound or a 30 pound ruck. Okay. Um, that's dry, so no water. Um, then you put your water in there, and then you put any food that you want in there, and then any clothes. Okay. So I, it's only like the size of a – it's probably smaller than your normal book bag. Okay. So you can't really fit that much stuff in it. But I don't know. You had to put everything in there, and it was February, so it was freezing. Yeah. And it went – it started at 6 p.m. Saturday night. Okay. And went till 6 p.m. Sunday night. Okay. There's – we got like – Two or one 20 to 30 minute break and okay. four or five 10 to 15 minute breaks the whole time. Okay. But that's your break is like you pull off on the side of the street because you're just walking around downtown, like with just like there's like 80 of us just walking around downtown. Okay. And then I don't know, you sh- shove as much food as you can in your mouth. And the only food I had, because like, you can't really fit that much, and they they say to stay away from like the beef jerky and stuff or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. You're, it's not, Anything, you're not going to digest it's not gonna it real sit well. well. Yeah. yeah. And there's no bathrooms. Like, mm-hmm. So you don't want anything to, I don't know, make that even more complicated than it has to be. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get, I get so, you. Yeah. Literally, yeah. yeah. So I had a, a box of those Laura bars from Walmart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's like 10 of them in it, I think, yeah. and a big bag of Sour Patch Kids. Oh, Because I was yum. like, yeah, I have I have a weird thing. I love Sour Patch Kids now. <laughs> I didn't care for them before, but now I'm like, these are lifesavers. Like, <laughs> these are great. <laughs> So it was. It started 6 p.m. Saturday night. We went. We all got in a line. I have no idea what I'm expecting. I was the, the only one that it was the first ever go ruck. Okay. So just the go ruck brag is a Fort Bragg heavy. So it's supposed to be the hardest go ruck. Okay. I bought it 
for my friend. Like he's training to be a Navy SEAL. So I was like, oh, you're going to need this stuff. So I bought it for him and like, oh, have fun. Well, then he got me one. Like, so then I had to go with him. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like you bought him the race. Like, yeah, to I do bought it. So I paid just as like his going away present or whatever. Got it. You're like, I signed you up for something terrible. Exactly. And then he's like, oh, I signed <laughs> you up friend. for something terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So we just drove down there, started off in like a big group. And they were just talking to us, just like explaining what's going to happen. And if you die, sorry, like you signed a form. And then, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I, I have still no idea what to expect. And then they're, they asked us, they're like, who's ever like heavy is this? Because there's different, there's like a star course, a heavy course, like a bunch of different courses. The heavy is the hardest one. Okay. So you and went for the full, and you're like, all right, I'm going to do it. I might as well go for the send full. It. Yeah. Yeah. I figured if I could do the hardest one, then you're good. Yeah. But so one person raised their hand that it was their first heavy. Well, me and this other guy. And then the cadre, they're all special forces guys. Okay. They ask you, they're like, who's ever first go ruck is it? And I was the only one that, I did not think I'd be the only one to raise my hand. And they just looked at me and they're like, you're stupid. <laughs> but they used other choice words, you know? Right. And I was like, what? So, <laughs> like, <laughs> as you're getting ready to get started, you're like, yeah. oh boy. Like we wow. have five minutes till start time. And I was like, oh yeah. Jake, my friend, I'm like, dude, I'm going back to the car. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah. then, <laughs> Something's gone, yeah. getting ready to go horribly wrong here. Yes. Literally. So then we start off and there's, it was like a two mile run and through the swamp. So you're just like up to your waist is just soaked in water. Blood already. And then we get to the like turnaround point, but it's just a lake. So mm -hmm. then you have to jump in the lake and do burpees in the lake. And it's like 40 degrees probably. Oh and then gosh. you get out and run back. So you're starting off and just feet are soaked. Like uh, your whole body's soaked. You're freezing. And then we had like a bunch of like partner stuff. Like we had, a, we had to lift a table over our heads, a picnic table, and sing the Star Spangled Banner and Twinkle Twinkle Little Stars. And like all this stupid stuff. And the cadre are just going around laughing at you. Just like, but you're like, can't hold it anymore. Everyone's shaking and cold. And then we so had, you're not just like walking no. this whole time. Like you're doing yeah. like that's so that's the heavy part of it. I found okay. that out when I got there. Okay, wow. <laughs> so the heavy part of it is like you have stuff. There's like 120 pound sandbags, five gallon water jugs. Um, I don't, we had to carry each other. Like it was brutal. So oh. we had this whole cycle of stuff before we started the walk. Got it. So then, how long did all of that take? Probably two or three hours. Okay, so the first two to three hours are just it's just smoking they're out. just yeah people like quit. Yeah. One dude like went into a full blown seizure. Oh my gosh! Like, it was <laughs> terrible. So they make you super uncomfortable, and then mm -hmm. they make you super tired. Super uncomfortable, super cold. Yeah, yeah, and you're just exhausted because it starts at six p.m. So mm -hmm. by the time we started walking, it was already nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like bedtime. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, for me, hey, yeah. tea time's nine thirty. I gotta get out of here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah, so then after all that stuff, we got in a line and started walking. And we got, we got split into like four groups. So for each group, there was a 120-pound sandbag, an 80-pound sandbag, and it was like 60 and 40. And then those big two five-gallon water jugs. Okay. And that was the only way you could fill your water up was you had to carry your water. Um, hmm. So we we thought that we were going to like – drink all of our water really quick mm -hmm. because then the jugs get lighter and you don't have to carry them as much. Cause if you dropped anything you had to get, it was like a penalty. So if you set anything down, then we'd have to like get on the side of the street. One time we had like 150 air squats and the cadre would just count it off. And we're just on a hill, like a dewy hill at like two in the morning, oh but we didn't know what time it was the whole time either. Cause we couldn't have our watches or anything. But so that added like a whole new, terrible element so but you, like, so you're in this group and you have to <laughs> of like 80 people just walking down the street and but, then, then so then we these, drop like, it and there's so there's cadre like lined up there's like four or five people showing us where we have to go mm -hmm. so then this guy who's literally the dude in front of me just like i don't know the thing like chucked out of his hand and mm -hmm. it broke he broke our water so it just like our shatters on the floor cadre is livid because they have to go get a new water jug now and bring it back and then <laughs> So we had to get we, the one that time we had 150 air squats. So they, they just counted you off and they're just like, one, two, three. And I suck at count. Like I can't, my brain doesn't go like, mm -hmm. and like, I was like one, two, and I'm like half up, half down. Like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> but then the other, another time we had to, so we had to take our packs off and hold them overhead and just roll through a ditch. So you're just like rolling over like pine cones and bottles and oh. like. It was awful. And then you, so then you're soaked again. You thought you're like, you're good. You're dry. Right. Wrong. 
So then, <laughs> <Wrong. yeah. laughs> so then we were we were walking some more, and you have these like 120 pound sandbags, and we walked. It was probably it was really late at night, and someone asked what, what time it was, and he's just like, "Time to do burpees," and then so we ought to do burpees, and then because and then he's like, and, "And it's noon," and it was still like pitch black outside. We're just like. It's not noon. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> but you're just like playing all these games in your head and yes, you're just like like shivering, game. freezing, and you can't eat really anything or drink. Like, But you're just walking and just talking to the person next to you. And then we, right when the sun started coming up, we got to this little, I don't know, this little point where we like, they're like, all right, there's a car here. If anyone wants to get in there, you can. And there was like coffee and stuff in the car. And they made sure like you could smell the coffee and we're just like, oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. everyone, like people are just profusely shaking at this point. Just like can't do it. Are people getting taking them up on it and quitting? Yeah, a couple of people did. Yeah. But wow. not not as many as I thought, honestly. Okay. But like a lot of people that did this one, like knew yeah. what they were getting into. Or they've done yeah. it before. Like most people went in it with like a good head. Yeah. Mm. But then, so then after they, they left, then we had a run through the, like through the woods and then we got to this place and then we had like, it was like an hour or two more of like all the PT stuff and you're just like army crawls, burpees and the grass is soaked and you're getting yelled at. Like you have to do stuff in sync and if you're out of sync, then the whole, everyone has burpees and stuff and like, yeah. but you have your like ruck on. So it was like, it was, mine was like 45 pounds. So you're just, just over that time because you've already been doing it for like 12 hours when the sun comes up. So you're like, oh, the sun, yes. And then like yeah. a cadre walks by and he's like, congrats, you're halfway. Oh and you're like, gosh. oh no! <laughs> like, so people are you're just you're just getting broke, like yeah. And then we so walk a lot more, and then I get like my boots were too tight or something, so I was getting like I don't know, I was limping, and, mm-hmm. like oh. you couldn't. I had ended up having stress fractures like <gasps> midway no up my shin. You yeah. did? It was awful. So we get to this little point, and we have like a 12 mile. It's supposed to be like a 12 mile run thing, and then there's sandbag cleans oh and gosh. push-ups like in between each thing and i was i couldn't do the run like well i did but it like took me forever i was like last and i was like i don't i've never been last in a stupid right. run like, <laughs> I, was like, I was like it was just mentally taxing oh yeah but then the sandbag cleans i did good because we do those all the time but then like that was done and then it was like all night it was like raining and just oh my gosh terrible weather oh, but we I can't get even imagine it was absurd <laughs> oh but then we get done with that and then we have to go um bear crawl through this like it's like a little river going through this mud um and you're completely soaked if any part of you comes up and you're not like it's not covered in mud you have to do burpees and then get in back in and then do it again and it was like it was pretty hard <laughs> so then you get back up and you're you're trying to run back up the hill to your ruck but you can't run because you're so muddy and slippery and stuff and mm. i couldn't run anyway because i had a stupid shin splints yeah. or whatever and get back to our ruck and then we have this like they called it a march back but you have people are just like dropping their rucks everywhere and just like throwing up and like it was awful but you get so we're running back and it was it felt like 500 miles i don't know how far it actually was yeah but it was probably the last hour or so we're just running so like i'm like hobbling trying to get (laughs) like trying to keep up with people. 23 hours in at this point yeah and but everyone's just shocked like oh, shaking yeah. profusely tears are just pouring down people's faces and then i ended up carrying someone else's ruck and i had no idea how or why but i couldn't even lift it like i was trying to carry it and it just kept dropping and i was trying to pick it up and i'm like dragging it trying to keep up with everyone oh it was gosh. so i've never been so broke it was really weird yeah hmm. and you're like i paid for this <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, right. chose I chose to, to well, do this yeah right yeah. and that was a thing too that like the cadre would come by and they'd just be like like do you yeah. guys paid it was like two hundred twenty dollars for this, and you're gonna get a patch if you finish. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, seems worth I get it, so idiot. Much more. And then just give it walk, and you're just like, well, he wants you to quit. <laughs> yeah, then they did too. Oh yeah, but, or that you'd be like running, and they'd come by and like nudge you or whatever, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> like they yeah. could, yeah, a fly could land on you, and you're eating it. But yeah, so then we got like we carried. I had to carry the twenty pound sandbag, and I was like. I couldn't even carry that. I was like, what is happening to me? Mm-hmm. But I like, you I mean you do, but like, mm-hmm. you just feel terrible. Get back and then he was like, so we're all lined up at the base where we started. So we're all thinking it's done. And just like, and then he's like, who has dry clothes in their car? And there's a big pond right there. 
and he's like like we're getting what and then so like that point i'm literally like shaking but it's like no matter what he says you're just gonna do it because you're so close right but you're just like like tears are just pouring down my face i'm just shaking profusely and i'm like Ugh. let's just get in the water i don't care like uh. maybe i'll die in there and it'll be fine <laughs> like, <laughs> take me out of my misery yeah, that's right <laughs> yeah so but then he's just like i'm just like he's like i'm just messing with you like and then he like i don't know it's like a whole big like i don't know ceremony thing gave us our patches they came through and they talked to each of us individually and it was like active duty special forces guys so it was really wow. cool and then but they made us like their wives made us dinner like after <sighs> that's awesome and then they just like passed out a beer and we all just drank a beer and just talked about everything and then they were like they sat us all down and just talked about all their war stories and stuff and they were like like you guys are the people that like we want to go over there and serve for like we're not sitting here to serve someone that's just going to sit on the couch and eat potato chips and take advantage of their freedom right. like so it's like they broke it down like that and they, like you feel really good about it yeah mm-hmm. but and especially because it's over yeah yeah and yeah. so we're trying to we're in the parking lot and nobody can take their shirt off like because it's so wet and sticky and no you can't lift your arms up because you've been wearing like a 45 pound ruck for the yeah. last 24 hours oh my gosh so you're you're we're, we had like a little chain where you lay down and then someone would take your shirt off and then another person would take their shirt off and then you just kind of rotate so people, other people are taking your shirts off. <laughs> it was terrible. And then we got... Now you know how girls feel with wet sports I don't bras. know how you do it. Now I don't know, know. how you do it. All right. <laughs> it's not it's too weak to be a girl not. in a sports bra, I'll That's tell you right. that. Uh, <laughs> it's awful. That's perfect. That. But then, so we were... We got back to the hotel. We, were, Me and my friend were planning on staying the night in, like, in the back of his truck. And we were oh. like, dude, there's absolutely no way. Like, I didn't think this I would be this hard. <laughs> 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 Underestimated so we, that. Yeah, yeah, literally. We couldn't walk up the stairs. It put, took us probably 10 minutes to get to the second floor. Oh, my God. They didn't have an elevator. So we're on our butt scooting oh. back up the stairs trying to get up there because both of – like, he has blisters all over his feet. And my, like, shins died, and my feet were just terrible. So <laughs> we ordered pizza and, like – tipped the pizza guy so he would bring the pizza to the door yeah can you <laughs> bring then, it in yeah literally yes. so then can you feed it to me <laughs> yeah. he, he brought it in we both ate it and then like we both woke up with pizza on us we didn't even finish one piece of pizza oh we just gosh. passed out of the bed of pizza just laying everywhere oh, it was yeah. terrible goodness. and then for like the next three weeks i couldn't i didn't do an actual lot for the next two weeks the body was just and then trashed. a week later i was like i still could like hardly move oh my goodness wow. gracious did you ever seriously consider quitting yeah yeah the whole time the whole time the whole time yeah the whole time Which, i mean no but like i'd be so much more comfortable you yeah know? like you do oh my gosh those games that you play with yourself i'll just get through this mm-hmm. i'll yeah. just do this mm-hmm. and that's what it ended this. up like hey get to this tree get right this. like that's, your guys get to this light bulb video it's, yes yeah. it was absurd how much that helped yes mm-hmm. yeah Where you just like i'm just gonna go i met this guy he where's we still talk on instagram a little bit but he would just talk about we talked about everything and anything like i would share i would sneak sour patch kids in my pocket and just like hand them some yeah and then he just like he'd tell me about his wife and his kids and what he does for a living and it's amazing how close you get to a person when you're just like Mm -hmm. it's amazing hey alex here join us next episode where we continue this conversation dr libby and i share our stories of perseverance grit and overcoming obstacles see you soon Thank you for listening to the PRing Life podcast. If you are interested in learning more or would like to work with us, head on over to our website, www.northsidefunctionalmedicine.com. See you next time.